It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. Do you want to start with this, this, this special that I told you about when I saw it on Broadway and I told you it was phenomenal and I said it's probably his best work and I've never been big on his stand-up. Yeah. I just haven't. Yeah, yeah. Not that I don't think he's funny because yeah. I thought his sketch show was hilarious. Yeah. Killing Me Softly was cool. Yeah. But I never was like, ha ha, D Dave Chappelle. Right. This one, this one is one of them ones, bro. Yeah. I mean, he's the GOAT. Chappelle is the GOAT. I don't see why you would say he's not. He's the GOAT. It's, it is uh, undeniable. I haven't seen the whole thing. Okay. Um... What I have seen of it is exceptional, but he's always exceptional. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just a really cool thing to see happen culturally because, you know, maybe like six months ago, right, before we dropped Views from the Sis, my last one, mm -hmm. I think on this podcast, I said, if this is successful, it's going to open up the doors for the goats, the, the the greats, the biggest comics in the world to get back to being edgy again and to tell these jokes. Because mm -hmm. everybody was kind of like running scared. Now, I'm not saying that in any way Chappelle's watching views and this isn't going, oh, I can do this now, you know. But what it what it did is it starts the ripple effect. And like I think everybody plays a role on their level in the ecosystem. You know, I think about like with mental health for you, you're not the first guy to talk about mental health. Mm -hmm. But you have a powerful, potent voice. Mm -hmm. So it's like when you speak about something, it echoes, right? And other people pay attention. There is somebody who told you about mental health. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. That guy has been speaking about mental health. Forever. Forever. <laughs> yes. Right? But you start speaking about it and then it becomes this national movement of awareness mm -hmm. for, especially in the black community. Right? And- Timing matters too. Timing, timing, size. Timing is really everything. All these things matter. And uh, I just thought it was so cool to see one of the goats up there laying it on the line, not worrying, not worrying about, you know, what could happen. I mean, taking a very different approach than he did in past specials where he, I thought he was a little apologetic about certain topics. Yeah, yeah, and like, yeah, yeah. I thought he was like very accommodating, you know, to what people might feel. And this one just going, no, I'm, I'm, I'm fucking great. I'm going to go for it. And like, that's what and I he, wanted to happen from views, bro. I wanted to bring comedy money, back. Bro. Well, yeah. If you got fuck you money, why do you care? That's my thing. I yeah. always feel like that with artists, with musicians. Like, yeah. if you already got all the money, why don't you just make the fucking music you want? Yeah. Why are you trying to cater to an audience? Why are you trying to make people like you? Just do your best art. And that's it. I promise you everything else will fall into place. That's it. That's it. So that's what that's what I'll say. Like a lot of people have been tweeting me like, yo, that you know, they are giving all Dave all the credit for for the, you know, going against PC culture and going against, you know, cancel culture. You've been doing that for a while, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah, but like that's part of the system. It's it's not like somebody does it first or mm -hmm. so, it somebody probably did it before me. And I had a louder voice than them. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I was able to reach some people. And yeah. then he was able to reach some people. That you're just playing your part in the ecosystem. And one day I'm going to be on Chappelle's level where I'm going to be able to voice things that's going to have that much of effect. But it's like, it's just so cool. If you believe that we're all connected on some kind of matrix, it's cool to see something I think I really lean hard into yeah. reach the highest level. And even if I played a little part to get in there. And I think it's different though. It's different because... It's, 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 it's the mystique of Dave Chappelle, right? We've seen Dave Chappelle walk away from $50 million before. Yeah. So this this narrative right here feeds into his, the rebellion of Dave. I'm a, yeah. Dave Chappelle's a rebel. Yeah. Like, you can't tell Dave Chappelle what to do. Dave Chappelle's going to do whatever the fuck he wants to do. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's how Dave Chappelle chooses to stay sane. Yeah. And with you, it's like still the underdog in a lot of ways who don't have shit to lose. So you I might as well swing for the fucking fences. I also don't have fuck you money. You don't have fuck you money. There's a different, like, there's you know a different level of risk. It's Absolutely. like, I'm putting on the table and it's Dave, all, Dave I'm has all done in. It. Dave, is, Dave has had the TV shows. Mm -hmm. He's done the movies. So he's like, look, I did all that already. This is what the fuck I want to do now. Yeah. You may still want to do some of those things. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah. either way, you're going to be able to do them on your terms. Right. Because like, Nobody really gives a shit. And I, I think that's the one thing that Dave is really exposing. And I think it's another reason, too. A lot of this shit that Dave is talking about is coming from a personal place. Right. 
He's like, I'm here to defend my fucking friends yeah. <laughs> that got caught up in this yeah. bullshit. He's had personal things happen to him because yeah. he's received backlash. So it's all coming from a personal place. Yeah, yeah. You understand what I'm yeah. saying? So being that it's coming from a personal place, people accept it just a little bit more. It's like, okay, this guy's not trying to be a rebel for the sake of being a rebel. No. He's not saying fuck PC culture for the sake of saying fuck PC culture. He's like, culture. I've been gotten thrown out of here. My and friends I'm are thrown out of it. here and, and it affects me yes. personally in that way. yes. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I think I think it's great. I think it's great to see. You know what I mean? It's a, you know, it, there's always a bummer because like when Dave Chappelle does a joke that you have a similar joke to, there's so much gravity around Dave. You just got to kill the joke. I don't believe that. Duvall said the same thing to me earlier. Duvall was like, man, and you Duvall don't and Duvall don't give it up for nothing. Yeah, but for Dave, it's different. Like for Dave, and and I have a joke that. I think it's it's more developed. I think it's a better joke, to be honest. It's, Let it's it rip, a, then. Nah, it, nah, I gotta, bro, I gotta, gotta take it out. I gotta Fuck take that. it out. Heavy. I gotta take it out. It don't matter if another player got the same move. All right? You might have perfected it a little bit better. Well, yeah, but at the same time, we have this code where, you know, in comedy, it's like it, an independent or like a unique idea is so valuable because that's our only currency that you got to just go, all right, bro, you got that one. But if you know you didn't steal it. Now, if you didn't get this idea until after you heard yeah. Dave do it, then I that's would be stealing. like, I get it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. if you had the idea before he did it no, and I've you been had touring, the I've been I mean, people who listen to this right now, you've seen me do it on tour, right? It's the MJ joke. You've seen me do it on tour for a long, long time. And um, and it's just it's one of those things where it's like we have a couple similar ideas. I have a whole other section of the bit, which is the thing I really like, and I think it like leads to that he doesn't touch upon at all. But we have a couple similar ideas, and it's like I have too much respect for comedy and a guy like Dave yeah. to where I would want to I would want to continue to do that. I might want to release, I don't know, maybe not, probably not, but I might on some level want to release a joke to like teach people, hey, Dave Chappelle has never seen me do this joke. I've never seen Dave Chappelle do that joke. But we both came out with a similar idea. Yeah. And like this happens sometimes. Like don't get freaked out when you see two people say something similar because people have similar ideas. Like you go on Twitter, you're going to see a clever tweet about something. And, I mean, look, even the Jesse Smollett joke that he did. Hilarious. I said that on this podcast the day it happened. What? The, the joke about like why would a person who's racist and homophobic watch Empire? I, I did a question of the day oh, about yeah, that. Oh yeah, yeah, but he got he got the whole he had the whole his joke was just Jussé Smollett. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A French actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> who got assaulted? Right. You know what I'm saying? I guess what I'm saying is like a bunch of people had had come up with that yeah, take, yeah, yeah. and I think what we should do when that happens is go, oh shit, we're having parallel thinking with one of the greatest. Yeah, but if you That's have, I don't have That's a problem a comment, with that. If you yeah. have one thought, like he. Like, he had one thought, but he built out this whole other world for that right. one thought. So yeah. if, even if you have the same thought, but you build a whole other world out for it, why not? Eh, why I not don't. let it the fuck rip? The MJ joke was the only joke that I saw. That, and by the way, I died laughing when he said that. But there was no, like, socially redeeming value to that joke. Yeah. <laughs> like, that was just some nigga shit. <laughs> like, 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 what the fuck? You, you got molested when you was a kid. Yeah. The only thing you got to show for is uncomfortable Thanksgiving dinners. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. at least you got to say you got your dick sucked by the king of pop. No. Yeah. I, mean, I wouldn't do it for me. <laughs> like, no. Yeah. I don't yeah, know yeah, if yeah, fuck yeah, the yeah. king of pop or not. It's, it's, you laugh at it. Right. But that was the only thing that didn't have anything deeper to it. Right. To me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even yeah. The, tra the, the transgender joke had a deeper meaning to it. One of them. When he, well, a lot of them did. But right. the one in particular, when he was like, the transgender looked at him and said... I don't want to give away his jokes. You got to watch the special. Yeah, but, go watch it. Watch yeah, it. We watch support this. We but support this. But is this one when the... I'm going to definitely say this one because I'm not going to take this out of context. But the transgender, when the transgender yeah. said to Dave, uh, you know, when you make jokes about R. Kelly, they say you're normalizing R. Kelly. When you make jokes about us, how come they never say you're normalizing Ooh. transgenders? Ooh. That's, that's a bar. Ooh. That's a bar. Ooh. You got to make you think. Hot. like. A, listen, man. I, I personally think this is Dave's best stand-up special. Really? But I've never been a huge Dave Chappelle stand-up person. Right. I, I enjoy Dave. Kill yeah. Me Softly is a good special. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. The other joints he did on Netflix, they were cool. Yeah. This one was hilarious. Yeah. Like everybody, go out and watch it, man. I go it, support. It was great. And you know what? Uh, the joke he's, it wasn't even a joke. The observation he did when he and he that's on net, he, that's on Instagram, so we could talk about that. But when he talked about he was doing the impersonation of people who... Um, I didn't like that. What? Tell me why. 
So he opens play up, the clip. Play the clip, Taylor. You you'll play it. He he opens up the special with this this and the you know the first part of the joke is you know the blah 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 right the Constitution you know what mm-hmm. I mean. And then the second part of the joke is like, here's another impression. Is, you got to get out of here. You can't say that. You're canceled. You're this, this. Who's that impression of? And then he looks at the audience. You motherfuckers. You guys are the worst. You mm-hmm. guys are this. You guys are the... We can't say shit. We can't have no fun anymore. It's like, you perform to sold out arenas every single weekend. There's no way you could believe that. You have sold out crowds every mm-hmm. weekend, loving everything that you're doing around the world. Nobody's trying to cancel you. Nobody's triggered. Nobody, nothing. You can't truly believe that, right? You might be speaking about 10 people on Twitter, but like I, I'm a comic, right? I perform sold out theaters around the world. I don't have these people. And if somebody does get triggered, the audience turns on them. If they go, you can't say that. My audience will start consuming them. That's but piranhas. But it's the same reason when you can see 10 people tell you that they love you on social media, yes. but one say, fuck you. And you pay attention. You pay attention so to it. So my feeling is like, you, you're you too smart to sh- to like put a spotlight on that. Like, like it's what? hard not to, though. No, but there's a different way that you could do it, right? I get that you want to address cancel culture, and I get that you mm-hmm. want to do that, right? Like, But even when I put out views, the point wasn't about the audience. The point was about comics. I was like, yo, comics, stop being pussies. This is what we do. We do comedy. Go out there and do comedy. The audience, it's up to you to get the audience to laugh at it and make them feel comfortable. It's not up to you to tell the audience how to laugh. It's up to you to make them. But calling them out is part of not being pussy, though, I would think. Nah, because the best, in my opinion, the best thing is showing, not telling. Like, Yeah, but calling them dumb and letting them know they pussy in that way... <laughs> I love Pete Davidson, you yeah. know what I mean? And Pete did it this weekend too, but yeah. it wasn't in a joke form. Right. So it backfired on you. Right. But when you do it in a joke form the way Dave did, because if you notice, everybody in the audience started yelling out Trump, which is another ill part of, of nuance to me. Like, Trump ain't responsible for everything, motherfuckers. Yep. <laughs> right? But everybody was like, Trump, Trump, Trump. And he was like, no, that's you. And by the way, he did that on the special. I don't know where he shot the special at. When he did it in New York, mm-hmm. New York crowd was the same way. Yeah. He did that same joke in New York, and everybody in that theater was like, Trump, Trump, Trump. He's like, no, that's you. I thought that's a great way to put the mirror back on people, man. I I, I love that. I, I love that, and I love the mirror. I just think the most effective mirror is when you show it instead of tell. 